Hello everyone. I actually have some really good news for you all today because Scotty Morris was found alive and well on March 24th, just hours after I posted a video on his disappearance. If you haven't watched that video yet, I definitely recommend you pause this video, go over to that one and watch it or else this video is probably not gonna make sense at all to you. But the internet was very upset about the disappearance of 14 year old Scotty Morris. A disappearance that lasted over a week. The last photo of Scotty from the night he disappeared was one of him looking very upset and being punished by his parents and forced to wear a shirt that said statements such as, I am a liar and I hurt my little brother on it. And now that Scotty has been found, the details that have come out have just added more questions to this case. Residents in Eden are breathing a sigh of relief tonight. It's, it's a prayer. Amen. 14 year old Scotty Morris disappeared on March 16th. Eight days later, police say he was spotted by an officer walking near the intersection of Harris and Hartford. The family wants to extend their greatest appreciation for Eden PD, for the fire department, for the community, for all of the communities around the world that have been praying for this. Scotty would actually end up being found only a five minute walk from his home at Hartsford Street and Harris Street. And to make things even stranger, emergency service scanners showed that when officers arrived on the scene, Scotty was found with his mother, Felicia. Daily Mail UK wrote, and I quote, it's unclear if Scotty was spotted by witnesses who then flagged this location to police, but his mother Felicia appeared to be on the scene before officers and was talking to her son. Police would not confirm details on how the team was found, but scanner audio from 10.33 p.m. when he was found states, I've got him with his mom. He's still in the same clothes that we had in the description, end quote. I've got Scotty here, 94.7. Can you get down here? I'm on my way. 94.22, do you need EMS? Yeah, go ahead and send them just to check him out. 22, are you confirming you found him? Affirmative. I've got him with mom. He's still in the same clothes that we had in the description. Clear. 543, come back 1041. I'm in route. One's been notified as well. Yeah, hey, uh, I am. 32 is on scene. 942. What's the 1020? My computer's not on yet. These are now for PD with the juvenile. 10 4. 94 2, 94 7, we are at the PD. EMS is on scene too. Clear. Meaning Scotty was still in that same white t shirt he was being punished in the night of his disappearance, that same shirt that his parents forced him to wear. Now, on the one hand, I don't think that's very strange because if he did run away with no plan, he wouldn't have any other clothing to change into. On the other hand, why was Felicia there before police? I know she lives closer by, but why was she notified before police were? In this case where it said that, you know, there's possibly child abuse happening, there's like a bunch of allegations in this case. Why was the mother on scene talking to her son, a son that allegedly ran away after a fight where he was forced to wear a shirt that said statements such as those? That's a big question. And that is what's really pissing people off still. However, after police did arrive, Scotty was then taken to IU Health Ball Memorial Hospital in Muncie to be checked out, but appeared to be pretty much healthy despite the sub-zero temperatures that were happening when he was missing. Scotty was then said to be placed in a safe environment while law enforcement continued their investigation into his disappearance. It's then said that two individuals were brought in for questioning, but they were both cleared. It's not stated who these two individuals were or what the questioning had to do with, but apparently they were cleared. So not much information had come out. However, on March 27th, Eaton Police announced on their Facebook that this would be their final update on Scotty's case. The statement reading, and I quote, Scotty Morris was located walking in Eaton, Indiana on March 24th, 2023. At this time, there is no reason to believe that Scotty was assisted by anyone while he was gone. However, there is still an open investigation. He has been medically checked out and has been cleared. This will be the last update on this case at this time. Due to Scotty being a juvenile, we have to protect his rights to privacy. Child Services has this case now, end quote. So what we learned from this final statement from police as of now is that this is still an open investigation. CPS is involved, but they're saying that CPS has this case now as well. So that is good if we're all hoping Scotty gets the help that he needs. So right off the bat, I am so confused because I'm wondering where was Scotty for that eight days? Where was he hiding or where was he staying that entire time? There's no mention of that where he was for eight days. He clearly wasn't out in the elements or else he wouldn't be with us still, in my opinion. It was too cold for that considering he was wearing a t-shirt and shorts. 
I've also seen multiple rumors of Scotty being found on an abandoned property his father used to own and that he was in some sort of trailer, but now I can't find any articles to support that, so I'm really confused where these rumors are coming from. Let me know down below if you know, because I am lost at this point. There's also no mention in this police's statement that Scotty's mother Felicia was with him when he was found, which is something that everyone is really wanting to know about. Why was Felicia there before police? What was she saying to Scotty? Why was she even allowed to interact with him considering the circumstances? I don't know if we're ever getting answers to any of those questions, but at least we do know that Scotty was found alive and he is well, and that is something that rarely happens in cases like this. We still know that his case is open, that it's getting looked into. I don't really have faith in CPS, I'm gonna be honest with all the cases that I've seen, but fingers crossed that hopefully Scotty can get the help he needs if he does need help, but we just won't be any, any more information most likely at this point in time on Scotty because again, he is underage. At the end of the day, I really do hope that Scotty can get the help he needs and that he can grow up in a loving, warm, happy environment like every child should. Of course, if there's any other major updates in this case, I will let you all know about it, but I do want to have a chat with you all below. How do you feel about this? What kind of questions do you all have? Because I have a lot and I want to know if you have the same questions I do about this. Again, I think we just need to be satisfied at this point that things are being looked into. It doesn't seem like it's being brushed under the rug because I really do feel like this case, there's something to it. It's strange. There's something off, whether it's something very minor, or if it's something very major and deeper and darker than we know about. I don't know. None of us do. But at the end of the day, I hope that Scotty can, you know, grow up and have a happy life. And I'm just glad that this case ended on the most positive note it could have and that Scotty was found alive. So with that, if you're not subscribed, I definitely recommend you hit that subscribe button. It allows me to continue to create content like this. It allows me to continue spreading the stories of these cases. And it also allows me to begin to spend more time spreading the word on these cases. Again, let's have a chat below on this case, and I hope you all out there stay safe, lock your windows and doors, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.